to today's special session. My name is Sister Kyoko, and I'm from the San Francisco Meditation Center. I'd like to introduce today's guest, Sister Sheila Sangani. She is a certified yoga teacher from the Chicago area. And in her 15 years of, of uh, voluntary practice, she's led many workshops and retreats for all ages. She also worked with doctors and other professional people for those with different medical conditions. And what's so unique about her practice is that she combines the power of breath with the power of thoughts. And uh, she brings self-awareness self-realization, self-healing. And her teachings shared with love and lightness brought transformation for many people. So welcome, Sister Sheila. And please let us take into self-healing today. Thank you. Thank you, Sister Kiyoko. All right, well, welcome everyone. And I'm gonna request everyone, if you can possibly turn the video on, that would be lovely. It's lovely actually to see everyone on Zoom, right? But face, <laughs> we're so used to at home not seeing anyone uh, in the center everywhere. So having the Zoom with face um, up here, uh, is very wonderful. Different energy, of course, right? And it's your wish if you would like to, or if you don't, it's your choice, of course. All right, well, welcome everyone. Uh, of course, uh, lots of people have joined and, um, you know, before and probably is doing the yoga. And this today's topic is holistic healing through power of breath. Uh, holistic healing, when we hear the holistic, how does that sound? Complete or incomplete? Complete. Complete, right? Complete. So when we talk, yeah. So when we talk about complete health, it's not just body, of course. It is your mind, your emotions, and your body, right? So everything we think goes in your body. And however the body is feeling also affects your mind. So they're both very much, although separate, but very much related. So in this holistic healing through power of breath, we're going to learn how can we really heal our body? Do you think we can heal our body? Do you think? Yes. yes. Yeah? Okay. Do you think we can be our own doctors? Yes. Oh, that's wonderful. That's wonderful. Well, of course we can. And the choice is ours, right? When we say we can be our own doctors, meaning um, what do I want to do for my health? Do I want to eat right? Do I want to be disciplined and doing what I want? Um, do I want to think right? Yeah, that's also part of health. And if I'm doing all of that right, then holistic healing, it's the complete package that you receive to feel good not just physically, but mentally and emotionally. And right now, I think we all need that emotional state stability, correct? Yes. <laughs> which, and through power of breath, we're going to learn some breathing techniques, which are very powerful, very easy. Um, I'm sure most of you uh, have um, done the classes with me before, but some of you who have not will probably the first time you will see how just the power of breath, your breath itself can bring about the energy and power within um, your body to feel good and release those chemicals that are good for us. Yeah, when they say when you exercise, what chemical it releases? Serotonin. Endorphin, right? Which is a good chemical that makes us feel good. And when we are in stress, there's another chemical which releases, which is a cortisol. And same time, you have the choice. 
you want to release positivity or negative chemicals. When we release stress, then we have pain. When we release feeling good mentally and physically, then we release the endorphin. And that's what we're going to learn. How can we, with our own mindset, using the power of our breath, doing some nutrition, uh, you know, learning just the basic one, doing some mudras, how can I heal myself? And uh, hopefully everyone is ready. Make sure you have a pen and paper. If you have any question, we're, we're going to do session at the end so you can write it down and ask at the end. Okay, you ready to start? Wonderful. Okay, so we're going to go ahead. And again, I want to thank everyone who has uh, made this possible for all of us to be together and to heal ourselves. So thank you again, um, all the sisters and everyone. Um, so let's go ahead and put our index finger and our thumb together, rest it on your knees, and we'll take a deep inhalation and we'll chant OM five times. Okay, so inhale. Oh. And relax. Okay, how did that feel? Did that feel good? Wonderful. So chanting of Om, which we call Utkit Pranayam, which is also a, a very powerful breathing, which opens up your lungs capacity. It goes into a very deeper layer of your subtle energy and it awakens that energy field. So doing this chanting of Om, you can do three times, five times. When you have anxiety, depression, your mind is working too much, just do this breathing for five minutes and you will feel very relaxed, okay? So now we're gonna go ahead and move on to our second breathing, which is deep inhalation and exhalation. So deep inhalation and exhalation actually works on our respiratory system. So now, Everyone is worried about their lungs, correct? And this is the perfect way to actually expand our lungs capacity. We all have that capacity, but because we are not utilizing it every day, the capacity reduces. So how do we utilize it? It's very easy. We're going to take a simple, deep inhalation as much as you are allowed with your body. Do that. So slowly it's going to get a little deeper every time you breathe in, okay? So let's start. Inhale. And exhale through your nose. Inhale. And exhale. Beautiful. Inhale. And exhale. Inhale and exhale. 
Now, as we are inhaling, inhaling and exhaling, let's visualize in our mind that I'm inhaling positivity and releasing, exhaling negativity. Inhale. And exhale. Inhale. And exhale. Now slowly feel that your breath capacity, now lungs capacity is increasing and you're able to feel the bottom, middle and top portion of your lungs. Now, as you're inhaling, your parachute, your diaphragm is opening up. And as you're exhaling, it's closing. Yeah. So this inhalation and exhalation process is what brings our immune system, our immune power. Now, everyone is talking about immunity. So while I'm talking, please continue the breathing, inhalation and exhalation. So immune system, immunity is feeling, knowing what the condition of your breath is like. Is it in alignment? Is it normal, rhythmic? Is it fast or is it slow? So depending on that, you will know how the capacity of your breath is. And how your immunity is working. Sometimes when we are under lots of stress, what happens to your heartbeat? It rises, right? And that means our immunity has gone down. Yeah? That's how you know that how you can bring it back to alignment. So the minute you feel that pulsation going sometimes to 90, 100, or whatever stage that you feel uncomfortable, just take a moment with yourself. and just inhale and exhale. So as you're inhaling again, visualize that all divine virtues of love, peace, purity, power, all of that is increasing within me. Yeah? Or I'm actually in that being. As you exhale, visualize that anything that my body does not like or my mind does not like, you're releasing it. So if it's frustration, anxiety, anger, greed, attachment, whatever it may be, as you're exhaling, you're releasing those thoughts, okay? As we inhale again, visualize that my immune system is strong and powerful. My heart rate is perfect. Whatever you want, just keep visualizing that. Keep saying with your mind, let your mind and body be together. Yeah. When we are doing any action and our mind is not in that, then the mind goes somewhere else. So make sure that we are totally present, mindful. And relax. Okay. And how does that feel? Just a nod with... with would make me understand that you you like this breathing and you understand it and it's working for you. Yeah. So let's say you've never done this breathing before. So when you take a breath like that in and out, it may be difficult. That difficulty is not that you're not able to breathe in that way. It's just we're not in habit of doing it. Does that make sense? So if you do this every single day, your capacity will increase your lungs capacity, when that increases, you'll notice that you're able to breathe more powerfully and your energy will rise with that. Because now you're retrieving that oxygen from that bottom layer of your lungs capacity. So when you go to the lower, very bottom lower level of your lungs, 
that's where all the oxygen is, uh, you know, is there. And this is how we are retrieving it from bottom and middle. So most of the oxygen is there, okay? Otherwise we do shallow breathing. In shallow breathing, we don't really feel that energetic feeling, right? Because we do that throughout the day. Wonderful. Now we're gonna do our third breathing, which is called Kapalpati, forceful exhalation. Now in this one, make sure you refrain from, refrain from eating, empty stomach, for at least two hours or three hours, okay? So if you've eaten today, make sure you don't do too much, just for a learning purpose, do few, so you know you're doing it correctly. Otherwise, if you're empty stomach, let's do this for a few minutes, okay? We're generating the heat in our body, which we call metabolism, metabolism. And when that fire rises in your body, lots of um, things gets balanced, okay? So we're gonna put our finger right below our nostril and the other hand will go right in the stomach area. So just hold it. Now we're gonna exhale through your nose. You're going to exhale. So if you feel the air coming out of your nostril and your stomach area is going in same time, that means you're doing it correctly, okay? Now, if you know you're breathing correctly, you don't have to keep the finger there. You can just rest it on your knees and just continue. Every second, we're going to exhale. Now just visualize as I'm doing this breathing, when I'm exhaling, I'm releasing all the toxicity from my body. All the toxins are being released as I exhale. Any negative thoughts that are in my mind, yeah, whether it is from one hour ago, 10 minutes ago, or 40 years ago, <laughs> just go ahead and release it. Yeah. Sometimes keeping anything in our mind, which we say suppression of energy, that suppression of energy causes a lot of ailments as well. Yeah. So release as you exhale, releasing all my tension. As you exhale, release any negativity, anything that you want to let go. Yeah? Anything that your body should not keep, let it go. And what should your body not keep? Our body should not keep any stress, correct? Our body does not like any carbon dioxide, any gases, so it releases by itself. Now suppose you're a little aged and you're not able to do every second. Do every two seconds. Pause for a second. Whatever your body's capacity is, do it in that way, yeah? Because each and every one has a unique body because the unique body is formed through our unique mind, our sense, our, our nature. That's why they say when we have diseases, when we have ailments, it's not the body that is producing. It is actually through our mind, the emotions, and the chemicals that are being released in the body, which causes um, the organs not to function in a balanced way. So keep exhaling. Imagine that your body is pure and anything that my body does not keep, I'm releasing it. I'm releasing anger. I'm releasing any attachment I may have to anything. Just release it.
when we say we are the healer of our body, we are the doctors ourselves, is because nobody else knows what you are feeling but yourself. Okay? And that's why they say you truly are yourself a healer. Why? Because we know what we have, what we have kept inside our mind. Yeah? We know what bad habits we have, whether it's eating, whether anything that we, we have, only we ourselves know. So release that. Every day when you do this breathing, yeah, continue to detoxify. This is actually detoxification. Detoxifying our thoughts, which are giving our body pain, release those. and relax wonderful okay was that hard for anyone no was it easy okay the reason i ask you is because i know i've met many people who are at the age of 95 98 and they say that's all we've been doing breathing for 50 60 years so yes habit makes a big difference but you can start anytime Age has nothing to do with it. Just because you're a little Asian doesn't mean you cannot do this, okay? Everybody can do it. Just a little precaution that you have to make sure that if you, uh, your empty stomach, and if you've had any surgery in the midsection, like the stomach area, in last three to six months, don't do this breathing, okay? After six months, depending on where the surgery is, you can do this breathing. If you're telling somebody to do it, whether your family members, your extended, uh, you know, friends or relatives, tell them they cannot do this if they're pregnant. Okay. Otherwise, everybody can do this breathing, and of course, empty stomach is very important. And the reason I say that empty stomach, I guess you realize, right, how much pressure it requires when you're doing this breathing. And if you're not empty stomach, what will happen? it will feel uh, you know, very uncomfortable, okay? Now our fourth breathing we're going to do is alternate nostril breathing, which is also called anulom bilom. And I'm sure most of you might have heard of this. So we're gonna use our right hand, close the right side and inhale through your left. Close your left, exhale right, Now inhale right and exhale left. Inhale left. Exhale right. Inhale right. And exhale left. Inhale left. Exhale right, inhale right, and exhale left, inhale left, exhale right, inhale right. And exhale left. Inhale left. Exhale right. Inhale right. Exhale left. Inhale left. Exhale right. Inhale right, exhale left, inhale left, 
Exhale, right? Inhale, right? Exhale, left. Inhale, left. Exhale, right? Inhale, right? Exhale, left. Inhale, left. Exhale, right. Inhale, right. Exhale, left. Inhale, left. Exhale, right. Inhale, right. Exhale, left. Inhale, left. Exhale, right. Inhale, right. And exhale, left. Inhale, left. Exhale, right. Inhale, right. And exhale, left. Inhale, left. Exhale, right. Inhale, right. And exhale, left. Inhale, left. Exhale, right. Inhale, right. And exhale, left. Inhale, left. Exhale, right. Inhale, right. And exhale left. And relax. Wonderful. Make sure when you're starting this breathing, if you want to make a note, that you always start on the left side of inhalation. Okay? So you always use your right side, right hand, to close that right side and inhale through your left. And now when you're ending, you always end on the left side. Okay? That is very, very important. Okay. Now this is called Anulom Vilom. Now why is this called Anulom Vilom? It's actually a very good stress reliever. Yeah? It actually reduces your stress to 90%. Also, if you have arthritis, this actually brings your autoimmune system to normal. If you have a memory, which is becoming weaker, which is very likely as we age, each one of us have, uh, have to go through that. But if you do this breathing every day, you will notice the memory will become sharper, okay? If you have any in insomnia, sleeping problem, this will become your sleeping pill. If you have blood pressure issue, which a lot of times when we are under any imbalance, any anxiety, stress, anything, our mind, our sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous system, it goes off balance. Yeah? And that's why the rise of temperature, blood pressure rises. That's why it's called hypertension, hyper meaning something inside is becoming hyper. And that's why it's called hypertension. So if you have blood pressure, this is the very best way to actually bring your blood pressure to normal, okay? Lots and lots of benefits are there. We can go on and on and on. And the second, the other breathing, Kapal Dhati, forceful exhalation, that has lots of benefits because all the organs in your midsection, 
your kidneys, liver, pancreas, stomach, intestines, all of them are being exercised, okay? So when we are doing the breathing exercises, it actually goes to the system where the healing is happening. The symptoms are the cause of the system problem. Okay, understand this. The symptoms are coming in your body because there is something wrong in the system. When we talk, when we talk in the medical, when we talk in the medical terms, we talk about symptoms. Yeah, we even know where the symptoms are coming from, but the medicine is always for the symptoms. When we talk about homeopathic medicine, Ayurveda, or any naturopathy, it is always dealing with the system where the problems are coming from. Okay? So um, when we do these breathings, this is actually taking care of your system. So let's say if you have a sugar-related problem, your insulin is not working. When we are doing kapal bhati, it increases um, that beta cells in your body. The insulin it releases that insulin. Okay. Um, same thing. Your stomach digestion becomes more powerful. So there's lots of um, activity that is happening as you're breathing. Yeah. We are just thinking that we're breathing, but there is subtle energies that are working to fix your body, okay? So, and then when we do deep inhalation and exhalation, it actually increases your oxygen level. So your immune system becomes better. Your immunity, again, your heart and your lungs, they, when they become better, when they work well, each and every organ in our body works wonderfully, okay? All right. Now we're going to do some exercise. I know you've been sitting, so if you'd like to stand up, uh, we can do some stretches. Um, first of all, we're going to stand up if you'd like to. We're just going to walk in that area with wherever you're sitting. Yeah, You just stand up and just pretend like you're walking. Just keep walking like this. Okay. You don't have to adjust the camera, nothing. Just, just walk the best way that you can. Okay, in the one, one area that you're standing. You don't need to move. <laughs> you need to be in that same spot, but you're just taking those steps. Wonderful, okay? Keep doing that. Inhale and exhale. And if you don't want to stand up, you can just move your uh, feet up and down. Yeah, it's up to you. When you're standing up, it feels good. You know, your body feels good. A lot of times when we are sitting too much, our blood circulation um, slows down too. So just doing this little bit jogging by yourself, one spot is a wonderful, wonderful exercise, okay? Just moving your body and being in a bliss, enjoying that walk. <laughs> Imagine there's, you know, sun shining on you and, you know, whatever you want to imagine. Just imagine. Beautiful. Um, beautiful views you want to imagine, water, you're walking by ocean, whatever. Just visualize you're happy and just enjoying the walk. Okay, now slowly we're going to now bring the arms up and down. Just keep enjoying the walk. Here you go, back and up and down. Now your arms are getting the exercise, beautiful. And keep walking, keep walking in that same spot, okay? You don't need to go anywhere. You just need to take those steps. And moving those steps, it, it does count as steps. <laughs> so just keep doing it. Wonderful, beautiful. Enjoy it. Keep inhaling and exhaling. If you don't want to even stand up, you can even do sit and do that too. Just move your feet up and down. Move your arms up and down. Just be in the glory. Just be happy. Okay. Happiness is the best medicine. I'm sure we've all heard of that, right? But how do you release that chemical? It's all up to us. Yeah. Wonderful. And relax. Beautiful. Keep standing. Now put your hands on your waist and just bend your knees a little bit and stand up. So you're going to bend your knees a little bit and stand up. Bend and stand up. Just bend your knees and stand up. Beautiful. Inhale 
and exhale. Inhale and exhale. Wonderful. Whatever your capacity, you do that, okay? Let your body decide what you can do. But these are very simple yogic stretches that we are doing. So your body slowly will adopt to these stretches. So even if you have a little bit of pain, it's okay. But do according to your capacity. So slowly just bend down and stand up. Bend and stand up. So this is exercising your knees, your ankles. And this is a very, very good exercise. And relax. Now, keep your hands on your waist. And just now, if you can, bring your knee close to your chest. So you're going to bring your knee up. Yeah, just one knee at a time. One, there you go, wonderful. One knee at a time, just bring it up. And there you go, inhale and exhale. There you go, perfect. It's almost like when you're bicycling, right? You're bicycling going like that. So you're just bringing that knee up and down. Beautiful. Inhale and exhale. You can move your arms. You can rest it on your hips, whatever you want. And just bring your just bring your knees close to your chest. It's a very simple stretch. Not too complicated, but very simple stretches. Okay. And yes, beautiful. And relax. Now, if you're standing up or sitting down, doesn't matter, interlock your fingers on top of your head. Inhale and just bring your arms up. And you can stand up on your toes and exhale down. Okay, inhale. And exhale down, beautiful. Inhale. And exhale down. Imagine that you're healthy and you're stable with your mind and your body both. Inhale. You stand up on your toes and exhale. This stretches your whole body and it's very good for your spine, for your whole body. Okay, inhale. And exhale down. Beautiful. Inhale. And exhale, inhale, and exhale, and relax. Okay, see, we're standing at one spot and doing all the stretches. Now, bring your arms together and inhale and look up. And exhale back in. Beautiful, now this is an embracing pose. You say thank you to the universe. And exhale back in. And then you say thank you to all the five elements. Fire, air, space, earth, water. For serving you. And we are serving them back. Inhale and say I am healthy, wealthy and happy. And exhale back in. Inhale. I love everyone in the world. And everyone loves me back. And exhale. Inhale. Visualize the God's energy of love and peace. And his blessings are shining upon me. And I'm healthy and happy. Feel happiness rising and exhale back in. Beautiful. Okay, everyone doing good? Yeah, wonderful. Now let's go ahead and put one hand on the right shoulder, your left hand. And if you're standing, you don't need to do that. But if you're sitting, do that. It's go on the left side. Feel that stretch. Exhale, come back. If you're standing, you just let the other hand slide down. Inhale. 
and exhale. Wonderful. Inhale. And exhale. Now, whatever your capacity, okay? Whatever your body allows you to do, you do that. And exhale. Wonderful. Inhale. This works on your right side of the body. And say, my right side of the body is flexible and perfect. Left side, my body is flexible and perfect. And relax. Wonderful. Now let's do a little bit of jumping jacks and then we'll do some stretches sitting down, okay? So just as you're jump, doing the jumping jacks, just go in the middle and bottom. Uh, so you start at the middle and then clap and then come back in the middle and down. So you jump. And if you don't have any problems with your physical, you can just keep doing the jumping jacks like that. Inhale and exhale, okay? You can do as fast as you want. You can do as slow as you want. If you have knee pain, you can just move the left side and on the left, right side, okay? And if you're doing without stopping in the middle, it's good too. Okay, and relax. You can go ahead and sit down. Now we did a little bit of stretches standing up. Now we're gonna do a little bit sitting. Okay, now go ahead and bring your finger knuckles and just bend them, your knuckles. Beautiful. And visualize your fingers are perfect and say thank you. When we are exercising, we are actually thanking our body for doing such a wonderful service in serving us. Make a fist and open, fist and open. Visualize God's energy coming through you. You're holding his hands and you're protected by him. And you are healthy in all your joints and your muscles and the body are perfect. And relax. Arms straight, inhale, touch your shoulders, exhale out, inhale, and exhale, inhale. Keep inhaling and exhaling, beautiful. Simple stretches, but very powerful, yeah? These are yogic stretches. You inhale and exhale with them. It's working on your joints. Now sideways, inhale and exhale. Wonderful. And when we add smile to our face, when you're doing the exercise, you get double the benefit. <laughs> you just have to try that, all right? That's why they say happiness is your medicine. Why? Because when you're happy, the chemicals are being released already. And relax. Well, first of all, we all have to be happy to be able to do what we are doing, right? And if we're unhappy, the exercise will make us happy. So now rotate your shoulders up and around. Inhale and exhale. Beautiful. Again, very simple stretches, yet these are for your joints. So visualize that your shoulder rotation cuff is perfect, moving. No spasm, the healing energy is moving perfectly. And let's go ahead and reverse. Inhale and exhale. Anytime you're doing the exercise, do not hold your breath, okay? Inhale and exhale.
Wonderful. And now go ahead and put your hands on your shoulders, elbows in. Okay. Inhale, up and around, and exhale down. Beautiful. Inhale, and exhale. And reverse, inhale and exhale. Visualize your neck and shoulders are completely relaxed. The healing energy is flowing perfectly. And relax. Beautiful. Now let's do our neck. So inhale, look up. And exhale down. Inhale up. And exhale down. Inhale up. And exhale down, inhale up, and exhale down, inhale up, and exhale down. Now inhale right, and exhale, inhale left, and exhale, inhale right, and exhale, inhale left. And exhale, just visualize your neck and shoulders are perfect, no spasm. The energy is flowing perfectly. And left. Now let's do clockwise. Inhale and exhale. And now let's reverse. Inhale and exhale. And visualize my neck is perfect. No spasm, no tension. The energy is flowing perfectly. And the next. Beautiful. Now we're going to do the exercise for our eyeballs. Yeah. This is a very good exercise if you have dry eyes, watery eyes, glaucoma, cataract, any, any eyes related issues. So you look straight, move your eyeballs up and down, up and down without moving your head. Just move your eyes up and down. Visualize, my eyes are divine, beautiful. My vision is perfect. And they're sparkling with divine love and compassion for everyone. Right, left, right, left, right, left. Without moving your head, you're just moving the eyeballs, okay? So you can feel the stretch of your muscles. Visualize that I see nothing but goodness with these eyes. All negativity is gone. And I see goodness in myself and in others. Now go around clockwise. Visualize that you're radiating love, peace, compassion to the whole world, all four areas. The vision is perfect. And reverse. 
and I'm seeing the circle of 5,000 years right around my eyes. Beautiful drama. And the next, wonderful. Now we're gonna press with our left hand, left side of your head, and you pressing. And just say your left side of the brain is perfect and stable. And exhale, inhale right side. And release, middle. And behind. And perfect. And now just go ahead and just with your eye, arms down, just move them left and right, move your head left and right, and just feel the energy of light. Your body is feeling light, and your mind is calm and relaxed. Just feel that bliss, joy, you're dancing in joy. Say life is good, I'm healthy, and I thank God for this wonderful feeling of help and happiness. And the next, beautiful. Is everyone feeling good? Yeah? Okay, not too much work, right? Very easy, very relaxing. Now, are you ready to learn some pressure points? Okay, make sure you have your pen and paper ready. This, these pressure points are very, very good. And they're very easy. Yeah, so if you write it down, if you have any, this works as a painkiller sometimes, okay? So between your index finger and your middle finger, the softer part, yeah, the softer part, it is this pressure point. So you bring your hand like this and you apply a pressure. This is for your eyes, okay? So if you have any eyes related issues or maybe we're watching um, too much screen or, you know, Zoom, what have you, listening to the classes um, or, or seeing it, just do the pressure point. Both side, both hands and feet have the same pressure point. Okay, so this is for your eyes, remember that, okay? Now the second good point to remember between your middle and ring finger is this one. Yeah, the softer point. So the, this, this pressure point, this is for your lungs. So you're going to again take your hand and just apply a pressure. So you're applying a pressure like this, pulsating, yeah? So just like that, you apply a pressure as much as you want, up to two minutes, three minutes with each hand, and then you'll see your lungs capacity will get better, okay? And then your ring finger and your pinky finger, this pressure point is very, very important. This is for your ears. So a lot of times when we have the wind, windy days, have you had any windy days there? 17 miles per hour wind, 25 miles per hour wind. When that wind goes in your body, the ear and your uh, brain connection loses. And that's when we feel dizziness. Has anyone felt dizziness before? So the number one reason is that so this is a pressure point for that. So if you have any dizziness, just keep applying a pressure point like this, okay? Both hands and feet have the same pressure points as long as you write it down and remember which these pressure points are, okay? Both hands, same pressure. Now all of these fingers, the tip of your fingers, or I should say the pad of your fingertips, all of them are blood circulation. So you can go ahead and again, press each fingers five times, 10 times, all of them. So if you're traveling in the plane or if you're 
sitting in the passenger seat, of course, not driving. You can do these pressure points. These are very, very good to circulate the blood. So if you're sitting for too long, do these pressure points. Very, very good, okay? And again, we're just pressing like that with your thumb, okay? Now, here comes another very good point. A pressure point. If you have anybody has neck pain, yeah, neck pain anytime. So right behind your thumb, right here, the the middle part, you're going to go ahead and with your other thumb, you're just going to kind of like um, apply a pressure going down or up. It doesn't matter. Okay. So this is for the neck pain. We have worked on this. To, uh, with many people and they get instant benefit within a few minutes, okay? So if you have neck pain and if you don't wanna go for medicine, uh, you want natural cure, just do this. Both thumbs have the same pressure points, okay? So behind this, right behind the, um, underneath the knuckle, you're just going to press that, okay? Like that. You can even take a pen and you can roll it down, it's up to you, whatever you feel comfortable, okay? Now, has anyone had a back pain? We all, we all feel back pain sometimes, right? So right around your index finger, when you go down, right around here in your hand, this is where the bone, you can feel the bone. And if you go a little lower, like right in the center or uh, around there, and you press inside that bone, that soft, that underneath inside the bone. So like that, just like that. This is for your back, yeah? And if you're doing this, and if this area hurts, that means your back is um, in pain. So continue to do this. This is another great pressure point we have done on many people and it's an instant benefit, okay? So this is a great pressure point for your back. So both hands, you can do that pressure point, okay? If you ever have any question about anything, um, I'm sure uh, we can um, get together. You can call me, you can email me, text me, uh, what have you. And um, we can go over these pressure points as well, okay? Again, or any, any questions that you might have. Um, also, another good pressure point is hypo and hyperthyroid, okay? If you have that, right below your thumb, this is that area of that cushion that we have. Just right below your thumb, right here, you're going to press that. This is for hypo and hyperthyroid, okay? So lots of pressure points to remember, but if you're writing it down, everyone is different and unique, so we don't know who has what problems, but knowing these pressure points really does help. So both hands, you can just do that. So when you're breathing, you can do this as well, the pressure points. When you're breathing, you can apply the pressure points. Now, another very good pressure point, and just right around in the, if you go a little bit inside, it's the pressure point for the stomach. <laughs> so stomach area, if you have any pain, just go a little bit inside and that's for the stomach. Now, right in the center, this is the pressure point for your kidneys. So if you have any kidneys problem, or if you don't have any kidneys problem, even if you want to apply, this pressure point is very, very good, right in the center, okay? And I tell everyone, if you want to do any pressure point, just start from your index finger, just, just go ahead and circle around, around your hands like this circle and then make a second small circle and then just continue doing that pressure point like that until you come to the center that's your kidney so that's another pressure point you can apply to get to cover all of them okay wonderful again if you have any questions we can take it at the end but these are the pressure points and um, hopefully this will help you anytime you're in pain Wonderful, doing good. Now we're gonna do, if you have any questions, again, we'll take it in, uh, 
in a in a bit, but if you have a question that you cannot wait till the end, you can go ahead and ask me. <laughs> can I ask you on the third and the fourth breath, uh, breathing exercise, do we do like maybe 50 of them, 100 of them, or maybe 15 minutes, uh, the third and the fourth one? Uh, yes, yes. You can do as much as you want. And, and again, that's a very good question. So let's go over those breathing one more time again. Uh, the chanting of Om that we did, you can do five times or you can do five minutes, depending on uh, how you want to do it. If you five minutes, it's a very high vibration sounds that you will create the cosmic energy that you will create in your body. It's very powerful. So you can start with that breathing three to five times or up to five minutes. And then the second breathing, deep inhalation, so people who have asthma-related problems, this will become their inhaler, yeah? So as you're doing the inhalation, this is your medicine. So keep doing deep inhalation and exhalation. You can do this for five minutes. If you have asthma, you can do up to 10 minutes. So you can do like five minutes, pause for one minute, and then another five minutes, okay? So that's 10 minutes. Now. The, the other breathing, forceful exhalation. You can do this. Start with two minutes, gradually graduate it uh, from two, graduate from two minutes to three minutes, up to five minutes. And then after five minutes, you can do one minute break, do another five minutes. And if you want to do more, you can just take that break and do more. You can do half an hour of this breathing, Kapal Bhati. It's a very powerful breathing. But to in order to do that, we have to have that capacity build up, okay? When I started 15 years ago, I could only do two minutes. <laughs> and then I said, oh my God, this is so hard. But then I wanted to do more and more. And I said, this has such a good benefit. So I kept on doing it. Within one week, I was able to do, um, you know, five to 10 minutes. So it's up to you, how, however much you want to do and how you feel your body will tell you. And then the other last breathing that we did, alternate nostril breathing, you can do this for five minutes, pause for one minute, another five minutes. You can do these breathings as much as you want. There is no restriction, okay? Uh, I have known somebody who had an eyes problem and they had um, some eye-related problems and they couldn't, uh, everybody gave up. The medical science said there is no cure for this. There's nothing we can do. And somehow he found out that this breathing would help the eyes. So he kept on doing it. He did for 12 to 14 hours of this breathing alone. And his eyesight came back and he was able to live uh, wonderfully. Yeah. So uh, benefits are there depending on how much we want the benefit. It's up to us. I have a last question. Yes. Now, can I have a question? Yes, uh, anytime, Chandruben. You are the you are the main uh, guest. <laughs> my my question is that if there is a, a special time you can give give me uh, because I have other problems that you need to know, and so that's why I just wanted to let you know. Absolutely, absolutely. I have okay. one question. I have one question. Yes, dear. I have a question. You're supposed to, you have Kaparpati, you should, you have a high blood pressure, so you can do five minutes, 10 minutes. Is a good or a not more, more than five minutes? You can do five minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes. The only but no problem for blood pressure. No, no problem. The only uh, precaution that you have to make sure that Kapalpati people show in a very different way. So there's slow, medium, and fast. So if okay. you're doing, if you have a blood pressure, imagine, okay, and yeah. you're doing Kapalpati like this, this will raise your blood pressure. Yeah, this forceful exhalation, very fast breathing, is for those who don't have any problems. 
Okay. If you have some imbalance, such as blood pressure, you do every second. Oh, oh okay. See how gentle it is? So anytime your body is going through imbalance, you have to give that gentle kind of healing vibrations to heal the body. And then your body will feel good and then you can do whatever you want. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, thank yes, you. Yes. Actually, it is almost time to take questions. So if you have any more questions, we can take those. How about for the dry eyes? Yes. For the dry eyes, doing these uh, exercises for the eyes that we did every day without missing a day, you will feel a big difference morning and night. I actually had somebody who texted me and they, uh, she said her glaucoma went away just by doing this uh, exercise. Yeah, but she was very regular. So anything that we do every day on a disciplined way, routine way, it will definitely give you benefit, right? Just like when you work out once a week versus working out five, six days a week. Yes. How about uh, for, uh, How about if I have a COPD to exercise, breathing yeah. exercise? You know, breathing exercises are good for everyone because the life itself is your breath right? Without that, you cannot survive. This body will not exist. So the, the breath becomes your power. How much power you have, you have to utilize that. Mm -hmm. So let's say even for asthma patients, they say, I can't breathe in. So whatever power you utilize slowly, it will build up. So yes, it doesn't matter which uh, imbalance that you have, which category of uh, disease you have, you can definitely do these breathing slowly. Sure. Uh, yeah. It's a yes, dear. I have a question. Yes, dear. Um, do you have a pressure point for a sciatic? I have sciatica on my right, on my left hip. So I wanted to know what pressure point do you have for that? Yeah, that's a very good good uh, question. Actually, another pressure point for pain anywhere in your body is mm -hmm. all the uh, you know softer part between your fingers going down to your hand. All of these softer middle part, these are for your pain. So you can just apply a pressure point like that, okay? And same thing with your feet. So if you're sitting, you can do that same thing. And the alternate nostril breathing will actually help your sciatica pain. Because anytime you have joint pain, anytime you have any nerve pain, it is all related to vata. Vata meaning it is lots of air in the body and that causes the uh, nerve pain, joint pain and other pains. Okay, thank you. Now let's talk a little bit about nutrition. I forgot about that. So let's talk about nutrition. Um, nutrition is a very easy topic actually to talk about yet the world is taking a in a very bigger aspect of you know do this kind of diet do this do that the only thing you have to remember is when you're doing a nutrition kind of um, benefit that you want in your body try to eat balanced diet yeah if you're eating anything healthy that's already a balanced diet so eat lots of fruits and vegetables and um, also when you are eating cooked food that's balancing your body. So eating those balancing uh, fruits and vegetables along with dal, chawal, rice, roti, whatever you want to eat, it's a wonderful, wonderful uh, way to eat. Very first thing in the morning, try drinking water. I'm sure most of you drink warm water, right? When you wake up, have maybe one to two glasses of water, depending on what your capacity is. Start with half glass or one glass, and then have that routine of eating. When you're eating, right while you're eating, uh, try not to drink water because it's very important for the purpose of digestion. So if you're, e if you're eating and you have a habit of drinking, have a warm sip of water, okay? Not, um, not cold water or not, not anything else. 
And after you eat the dinner or lunch, wait for about half an hour to one hour. If you can wait one hour and then have the water, any drink, that's wonderful. So don't have any drink right away after eating. When you're eating, chew your food at least 35 to 40, 50, 60, whatever time you can chew. Chew your food so it becomes more like a saliva, it becomes more watery. When you're drinking water, again, if you can tolerate warm water, room temperature, that's the best water. Avoid anything that's ice related. Now, if you have kapha related issue, meaning when we have mucus, yeah, that's when it uh, all, all the uh, COVID, everything that we are hearing now, it's related to your lungs, right? When your lungs are under uh, imbalance, it's more of that kapha that is built up. So how do you release that? Well, when you have that mucus buildup, you need to take in uh, more of uh, natural food. Yeah? Avoid anything that's dairy or anything that's sticky. So anything like um, you know oily products or maybe key, you know, clarified butter, all of that will produce more mucus. So you wanna stay away from all that, okay? So, um, and, and if you have beta related problems, beta is fire in the body. So when we grow older, we have hot flashes or menopause, whatever you wanna call it. When we are under that, you want to avoid anything that's spicy food, okay? So have more balanced kind of like, you know, steamed veggies, not too much spicy. Um, all of that will help uh, relax your body. So if you're beta related, if you have acid reflux, the number one um, problem for that is our food, our diet. Yeah, Our diet, Indian diet, taste is good, food is good, but we need to understand that spicy food aggravates our body. Um, you know, anything too much of dairy can aggravate our body. Yeah, So everything in balance is, is the right way to do actually nutrition. Uh, no one's perfect in nutrition, actually, even though if you go to a nutritionist, you know, from their understanding, they'll tell you you should eat this, that, eat. But your body actually is the best nutritionist, uh, dietitian. So, uh, you know, ask your body. Does my body like this? And your body next day gives you pain. You say, well, I'm going to avoid this food. It's as simple, actually. You know, uh, try doing that. And, uh, you know, diet, diet part should work really good. They include lots of vegetables and lots of fruits, uh, you know, three, four types of fruits. And if you want to stay empty stomach, uh, eat your food seven, eight o'clock in the night or before even that, stay empty stomach for 12 hours or 14 hours and then have your plate of fruits or, you know, smoothie or if you want, but, you know, having, having fruits, uh, uh, Anything that you can eat is much better than um, juices because then you make saliva in your body. Yes. Yes, dear. What do you recommend to drink when you eat them? Because I usually drink water. Yeah. Well, you know, understanding this concept of why we should not drink will answer your question. Because when we're chewing our food, our body is creating that heat, that fire to digest that food. So when we're drinking, we're shutting off that fire. So the best thing is if you if you have such a habit, take a hot water and sip one or two sips if you need to sip. Uh, just like in Chinese, right? A lot of times, you know, they have um, hot tea all the time. Yeah, even when you go for any places, they'll give you hot tea because your stomach needs, uh, you know, the temperature in your body is 98 imagine and when we eat ice cream or when we eat anything cold you're shocking your body so for it's the good. acidity what kind of food you can eat and what you cannot eat for, what is it for which one for acidity yeah for acid reflux like it, like i said in ayurveda it is pita imbalance so anything that's masala oriented right got a masala very bad um anything that is fried is not very good so anytime you have acid reflux, kapal bhati. This is the best exercise for acid reflux. My mom about mm, 10, 15, about 10, 12 years ago, or even more, 
when she started doing this breathing, she was taking Nexium for her acid reflux. When she started doing this, just within a few, few weeks or a month, she got rid of that medicine. So, and, and it's till today, she's not taking it. So Kapal Bhati is excellent. And again, diet, not eating anything spicy and fried definitely helps. Sister. Sister, oh, I'm oh, sorry. Go ahead, go ahead. Obesity. Go ahead. Sister, obesity. Obesity, yeah, very good question. <laughs> Uh, that's one question that everybody wants to win over, have victory over. Obesity, I think, in my opinion, I would say, it is something that I have to work my, you know, uh, ourselves. Obesity is a cause of, uh, you know, many conditions can cause obesity. Right now, lots of medicine can create side effects and it can create uh, more body weight, water retention in the body. But if, you, if you're eating, uh, if you have obesity, try eating natural stuff, more fruits and vegetables or steamed vegetables and, um, you know, doing these breathing exercises and having that gap. So if you eat at seven o'clock, don't eat anything till morning, 10 o'clock. So it's a 14 hour fasting. And then when you eat, um, first plate should be your fruit plate. Don't eat anything till 12 o'clock just only fruits, okay? And then uh, the second uh, lunch meal, you can have the salad as much as you want. So eat salad as much as you want to lose weight. That's the best way. And then just a second meal after the salad right away, you can eat something little cooked, just a little bit. Maybe a few, you know, 100 grams or something just to satisfy that, balance that. So if you do that, you'll lose lots of weight. It's, it's again, it's a discipline. It's a, you know, it's about our, our own discipline. Lots of people that I know, they're, you know, they say it's my bad habits that has caused my obesity. So a lot of times, you know, of course, there's a condition that uh, can cause, stress can cause, uh, medicine can cause, but uh, it's, our, it's our habits. How much is that true that pro you need so much protein to eat? Is that true that you need so much protein? Every adult needs that much protein every day? Our body actually, um, there's never any protein deficiency in our body. Yeah, our body only needs about 3%. Uh, sometimes, you know, we get that naturally from fruits and vegetables anyway. So even if you don't eat protein, you're getting it from fruits and vegetables. Um, the concept of protein is, is really, um, you know, people want to sell their products so they say okay you have to have protein shake you have to have this and that but uh, the best protein is chana you know like uh, ch roasted chana is the best protein that you can have so just have 10 12 pieces of chana and you'll have enough protein in your body you have a little uh, soup uh, you know uh, mung soup that's good protein any dal that we have uh, with chow that's a good protein so actually our body doesn't need much protein. It's, it's about how our, our body is uh, taking that nutrition and absorbing that food. That's what's more important. Thank you. Is sister, genetic I, cousin? Uh, Hello, sister. Yes, dear. Uh, genes. Genes are concerned with uh, our diet. That generation can be generation. Some people are eating certain type of food. Basically, at Bengal, uh, uh, where is most of the fish eaters are there, mm -hmm. they are consuming fish from the ages, and if they change vegetarian food or some diet food, will that not affect their body yeah. metabolism? Actually, uh, you know, when it is only in Bharat that we say sato, rajo, and tamo. Guni, right? So Sato Guni means that we are from those days, times where non-vegetarian was never there. Yeah, it was oh, only... No, 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 uh, I, I, I will, uh, I have some issue about this. Those people whose staple food is fish. Yeah. They are eating from, and it is available. Now, no doubt, with freeze and all, we got all facilities. But ancient time, uh, those who are 
staying near the bank or near the uh, river bank or sea shore, their staple food was the fish and all. So if they change over, some diet would uh, like vegetarianism or any other thing. Will it not affect them? Their genes will not deprive, their cells will not deprive. Yeah, you know, I, I think it is somehow uh, uh, put in our mind that, that we need this kind sort of food to get those vitamins and minerals and protein and what have you. But our, our veggies, right, even, even lots of vegetables and fruits have that, those protein. So only way to really test it out is try it out and then um, do your blood work. You know, if blood work is coming perfect and you, you're on this diet with vegetables and, you know, fruits and all, um, then you know it's it's sufficiently, you know, you're getting enough that you that your body needs. It's a, you know, it's the best way to answer because everyone's going to have a different, you know, background and their it's eating background, habits. Background, different understanding and it's yeah. different income group. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, you know, I mean, I've known people who say, well, you have to eat meat. If you don't get meat, uh, protein, then, you you know, your body, um, it, it, everyone's opinions are different. But, be, you know, nature made what God has created. God has created natural stuff. So fruits and vegetables, anything that's made with five elements are always going to give you all the nutrition, vitamins, minerals that our body needs. And granted, of course, staying happy, not emotionally stressed, all of that, it's a holistic approach of, of really healing our body. It just, yeah, it is not just, uh, you know, uh, what we eat and, uh, you know, so we get caught up sometimes in these small things. But uh, oh, wonderful question, thank you. Hello, oh, no. my name the, is Nita. How, I want your number, please. I'm sorry, what was that? I want your number, please. Yeah, sure. Um, it's 630. 630. 697. 697. 67. 63. 63. Yes. Okay. So Thank you. Can you can Thank text you. me um, uh, any question you have, you can call me, but I think we're running out of time and we're going to do a little bit of meditation now if you're all willing. Okay. And okay. Uh, just One really more help. question. One more question. Yes, dear. Uh, what we have learned that uh, Antar Kumbhak and Bajo Kumbhak is essential for performing breathing technique. Inhalation, retention, exhalation, retention. So in first pranayam bhastrika, retention is required with proportion that Hatha Yoga says. And with Kaparabhati also, uh, this retention is required, but it is forcible exhalation and natural inhalation. So what do you think about that? Retention. You know, yeah, again. You know, everyone's body is different. So when, I, when I'm telling you to inhale, according to your capacity, you're doing it. So really going through those counts of, you know, let's do one, two, three, or just wait one, two, you know, after, after a few seconds, exhale this many. I think it's, it's all, uh, it, it's really common sense. And I tell people when you inhale in, you know, you know your capacity, how much you're inhaling and exhaling. Um, you know, we don't need to go more deeply into, um, you know, counting um, breaths and, you know, how many seconds I should hold. So just simple breathing, like, and everyone's going to have a different capacity in their different ways. So, uh, you know, just, just work with your body. Your body will tell you exactly what is, what is right and wrong. Uh, I mean, I'm telling you something different. Tomorrow, somebody else will tell you something different. So I think it all depends on what we want to how we feel at the end of the day, okay? And uh, I think it was a wonderful- Sister, your, sister, your email, your, your email, please. Her email's in the chat. Uh, Tim, the email's in the chat and her phone number's in the chat. Oh, it is in the- We'll be able to get the recording. Yes, and we will be posting the recording on our website. 
So it, okay, if you get there okay. and on our web, our YouTube channel. How come because I don't see I, in the chat? I um, don't know if I have. Uh, okay, in the chat you said she has number. Yeah, it's the but last. It's not. It says to everyone. Oh, why is it in the waiting room? Yeah, it's not. It says it's in the waiting room. How does it do that? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I, I don't see the number. How does the chat get in the waiting room? How do you get a chat in the waiting room? That is a new one for me. <laughs> okay, well, let me try it one more time and I'll make sure it's not in a waiting room. I see the number now. Yeah, it just came up in the chat, the number. But no email, no email. Okay, it's coming, dear. Hold on one second. There you go. Ding, ding, thank ding. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> I, thank I don't you know if this is a good Elizabeth. Sheila, we could be here for another half hour. I have I, to I agree. And I, I, I think, you know, to keep... Uh, keep our mind and body at, at very ease. I think we should end it with our meditation. And, you know, we, we always have questions and questions are never ending. So I think just being in the, in the moment of quiet and calm. So let's relax your whole body. If we have just a few minutes, uh, if we can go on, Sister Elizabeth, is that okay? Absolutely. Okay, wonderful. Take your time. Okay, relax your body and just... Take a few deep inhalation and exhalations. Now as you're relaxing, slowly relax your toes, your ankles, your knees, your hip region, Lower back, keep relaxing and slowly bring your attention to your lower back and your upper back. Relax your neck region. Relax your facial expressions. And completely calm and relaxed. And very slowly, let's bring our attention to the center of the forehead. Point of light. Visualize that light in the center of your forehead. I the soul. Become stabilized in that light. Now very slowly visualize God's vibrations his light, his blessings are showering you with all the power that you need, all the healing energy that this body needs. Let's radiate those rays of vibrations of peace and love. to each and every cells of your body. Your mind. Just be completely relaxed. Just feel those healing vibrations of divine energy, the supreme energy, his hands right on top of your head, 
para sempre. All the answers that you've been looking. Visualize that they're all answered by God. Whatever we need, whatever we want. He has blessed us. Completely stabilize yourself in that. I, the soul, with the healer of this body, this body is strong and powerful. The immune system is strong and powerful. My mind is calm and relaxed. Feel the vibrations of love and peace entering each and every cells of your body. Slowly radiate those vibrations of love and peace to everyone around you, to your family members, to your loved ones. your neighbors, your colleagues, your boss, and slowly radiate love and peace, purity, healing vibrations to the whole world, to your unlimited family, Slowly come back to your consciousness. Rub your palms together. Place them on your eyes. And slowly go over from top to bottom, all over your body. This is a positive energy, healing energy. And then open your eyes. All right, for everyone. Shilpa Ji, I had a question. Shilpa Ji, I had a question. Which point should gas for gas? Sister Elizabeth, there is, you're on mute, so I cannot hear you, but there is one question. Uh, we, will, we will make sure we'll answer this. Okay. But for gas-related gas problem, um, obviously, you know, what we are eating is causing the gas. So you need to see, uh, just avoid anything that's gassy, cauliflower, cabbage, and other stuff. Um, you know, having a little bit of ginger water or soot powder, ginger powder, add it to the warm water every morning or before your meals will help with the gas. Okay. And thank you again, everyone. Thank you. Yes, thank you so much, Sheila Bahanji. <laughs>